Buenos días. Hoy es martes 27 de junio. And I welcome you. And we're reading through 1 Samuel. Are you learning anything? You know, is this the first Old Testament book I've tried in these daily devotionals? I'm not sure. Um, I think I went rapidly through another book, but this is paragraph by paragraph, verse by verse. I hope it's helping someone. Once again, that's why I do it. Um, and I want to remind you that tonight you can tune in and be online for our prayer meeting that begins at 630. Pray with us. Send your requests in to us and see what the Lord will do. And uh, thank you, those of you who have sent in offerings and helped support the church in all the various things um, we're trying to do to spread the good news of Jesus. So we're reading in 1 Samuel at the end of chapter 14, Saul almost killed his own son because of a rash vow he made. You know, I just want to go over that again. If you're depressed about anything, don't make a decision. Wait till the depression lifts. If you're angry, do not make a decision. They tend not to have wisdom. They tend not to be of the Lord. Before you make promises and vows or make plans, we, we, we need to say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Um... So now we read, this is kind of mop-up verses, end of 14. Uh, after Saul had assumed rule over Israel, he fought against their enemies on every side. Moab, the Ammonites, Edom, the kings of Zobah, and the Philistines, wherever he turned. This is going to take up, you know, years. This is a summation of it. Wherever he turned, he inflicted punishment on them. He fought valiantly and defeated the Amalekites, delivering Israel from the hands of those who had plundered them. So now here's the, you know, Saul is like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. He's a double-minded, two-heart kind of guy. Here, God is blessing him and using him, and he fights valiantly against the enemies of God's people. So the king is functioning well at this point. Saul's sons, verse 49, were Jonathan, Ishvai, and Malkishua. The name of his older daughter was Merab, and that of the younger was Michael. Remember that name. His wife's name was Ahinoham, daughter of Ahamaz. The name of the commander of Saul's army was Abner, son of Ner. And Ner was Saul's uncle. So Abner, the commander of his army, was a relation. Saul's father, Kish, and Abner's father, Ner, were sons of Abiel. All the days of Saul, there, were bitter, there was bitter war with the Philistines. And whenever Saul, Saul saw a mighty or brave man, he took him into his service. Any lesson in there for us? I see one. First of all, notice... At this point, Saul is leading the people and God is using him to deliver Israel, who he loves, out of the hand of their enemies. How Saul is doing personally with God, we're going to find out. We'll see. But God gives him wisdom here as a commander because whenever he sees in all these battles a valiant, a mighty, or a brave man, he said... Bring that guy closer to me. Let's give him a position. He was looking for brave and mighty people, aggressive, willing to fight, willing to risk their lives for the king. Loyalty to the king. Oh, and he saw someone strong and loyal. I want him close to me. Not everyone is strong and loyal. Not everybody is a mighty warrior, he found out. Is it not so the same today? 
Is every Christian on fire for the Lord? Is everyone available to our King Jesus? No, some are so busy living, they can't be used by Jesus to do exploits for him, take territory for him, not land, souls, leadership, building up the body, the body of Christ. Paul, in the New Testament, on one, his second missionary journey, he heard about Timothy, who was a convert from probably his first trip through Galatia, southern Turkey. And when he heard the good report about him, he said to Silas, who he was traveling with, let's take Timothy with us for the rest of the journey. Why? He's strong in the Lord. He can be dependent on. He has a good record. He probably had done uh, tasks in the church there. So God is watching everything we do. Ushering, prayer band, singing in the, in the choir, uh, a deacon, whatever it is. Faithful to go to shelter. Faithful in praying for a need. He's seeing who can I trust and move him up. He is faithful in little things. will be faithful in great things. Don't you think King Jesus, the captain of the Lord's army, is looking for trustworthy soldiers today? I can assure you he is. Who can he trust who's not out for themselves? Who can he trust who's not living a self-indulgent life? Who can he use who's going to have his heart for the people, the people he died for? How could the Lord use someone who didn't care about people, but Jesus died for the people? You get it? Self-centered self-indulgent, uh, lovers of self, lovers of pleasure, lovers of money. How can he use people with no depth of character and no get up and let's get them in the name of the Lord? I mean, why am I saying that? I'm saying that because I want God to use me. I want him to work in me where he can trust me and he can promote me and he can promote you. With all the experience some of you have, how many meetings have you sat in? What are you doing for the Lord right now? I know what you're going through and all that. When are you going to get past that and be able to teach others? Like in Hebrews, the writer says, you know, I have to write to you and give you baby food. I'm, I'm bringing some Similac with me. But you should now be able to teach others. But now you're still needing to be taught yourself. You know, you can be 30 years in the Lord and be a baby. And you can be uh, four or five years in the Lord and be ready to rumble. See, but that strikes at self-indulgence. And who's the center of our lives and activity? Is it me and what I want? Or is it, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Let's be available to God today. Amen. See you tomorrow. Amen.